24 pistol that he had up on a, on a nail, took it down and he walked outside there and he seen this guy with his, with his sack of this booze over his shoulder heading for the outhouse, you know, at the alley, and he fired that gun all the way around, and it, and it never did go off until it come up again, and when it did, it grazed the guy right here on the left ribs, you know, opened up the skin there. And he dropped that beer and took off down the alley. Well, about 20 minutes later, while well, there's a knock on the back door, and this old man next door, he had a 12 gauge shotgun, and he just threw that up in my dad's face when he answered the door and he said, USB, you just shot my boy. And my dad said, Oh, is he dead? He said, No, he said, That's too bad. <laughs> But anyhow, somebody heard that shot and they, they called the sheriff and the deputy came by about that time and he called him before anything happened, you know, and he took the gun away from that old guy, you know. But anyhow, that was a very, very close call, you know, because my dad didn't back down from him from nobody, you know. And, but that, that's just another story, so. Can you put some about the wildcatters coming into the blackboard and drinking and fighting? They were. Yeah, well, see, oh, so, God, they did. Because the wildcatters were part of that depression period. Because mm -hmm. that's when the oil was coming yeah, in. That's, that's what, what we have so far. worked in the fields. That's what we have so far. On the heels of the Great Depression. Well, I think we learned our lesson back in the days and blackboard days. Now, from that point on, we could either st uh, talk about the Edison work camps or we could talk about the, what you, the wildcatters. The work, the work camps would be better. Okay. I used to work in the Edison work camps. Um, having trouble coming up with anything that rhymes with camps, though. He, he didn't work in the, in the days camps, lamps. Lamps? Yep. On the three patch. I didn't finish that. So I want to finish that up because okay. this lady, sorry, this one. One time, and she, I went out, we played about four or five times out of her house. And in, in an afternoon, you know, on a Saturday afternoon or something, and a Sunday, maybe just on the weekend. And she had yard parties yeah. out there, and had a lot of people there, you know. And uh, so we, uh, that was the Pals of the West, uh, uh, yeah. Carlos Jones and I. We were doing this on the side. So uh, one, one time she, she told me, she said, you know, Lloyd, I've got a whole bunch of... Uh, I got a whole bunch of uh, songs and stuff that my nephew wrote, and then uh, the outfit that he played plays with, and that garage. I've got a whole big old uh, box of them there. And she says, "Would you like to have those?" She said, "I'm going to send them to the dump. I got to clean my garage out because I don't want that stuff around, you know." And I said, "No." I said, "I don't. I don't know what I'd do with them because I never read, read music at all, you know." And she says, well, she says, I'm just going to have to send them to the dump then. And so I got to thinking about that. And then the next time we went out to play, I said, did you throw away those things? And she said, yes, I did. You know what her name was? You know what her, her nephew's name was? What? Lloyd Perriman of the Sons of the Pioneers. Oh, is that right? Now, that was a hell of a joke to me. <laughs> and I missed that just by that much. I could have had their original manuscripts in my possession. And you know, I never thought a thing about it's it you know, at that time. And I thought, Jesus Christ, I get to thinking about that now. And, and that, they, they were, that was the original stuff, you know, that, uh, that Roy Rogers and them were making. Because I think in 57, he sold that franchise to the boy Sherman, you know. And he had no more to do with it because him and Dale Evans had their program in the Melody Ranch thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, they split there. See, that's, that's how come the son of the years didn't, uh, didn't continue with him. So, so uh, great story. Mm -hmm. So that covers that. But anyway, I got off the track there. But I wanted to, no, it's I wanted to tell you about oh. that wheat patch deal because, you know, it, it just happened right here at Bakersfield, you know. So, so, we, so, we, so do we have all the verses then? <coughs> okay. Okay, well, we probably just about have everything done. On the heels of the Great Depression, well, I think we learned our lesson back in the day, like four days, in the days of the Edison at work camps, picking guitars by the kerosene lamp. <laughs> Is that accurate? It's accurate. Okay. That is accurate. <laughs> you know, I think you're not a good daddy. <laughs>